everybody, and welcome back to Is It Kino, your favorite movie review podcast. And as you all know, a, a friend is a gift that you give to yourself. So here are the three greatest gifts of my life, starting with Kino Corner. Hey, monkey, you know, really, really glad to be here. You know, I feel very honored to be here for this video. You know, you know, if you need me to do any work for you, I know that you didn't uh, get to be the the, the host of his Aquino by falling there yourself. You had to climb up there. I know the job security in the podcast world just, you know, it just doesn't really exist today. But, you know, as I say, if you want to review a movie, you have to make the money to buy a ticket. Uh, sorry, Kino, I don't hire fucking thieves. And I had to name Kino way before you did. So it's going to be a no for me, dog. But we've also got E. Rich McCoy. Yeah, it's E. Rich rubbernecking this ugly, tragic accident of a, of a show. Uh, and getting some footage of it while I can. And there is a med to my nightcrawler, Florian Himsel. <laughs> I, I cannot believe that you would sexually petition me to, to just so I could work for you. This is really outrageous, you know? <laughs> yeah, was Lou implying you're that Riz Ahmed was also a bit of a nightcrawler in a different way? <laughs> you're, you're, you're mixing up Riz Ahmed with Rene Russo. Well, oh, yeah, he, he no does idea. suggest that <laughs> that Riz Ahmed might be a like a gay hooker at oh, one point. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> if he, if he tricks, he's a trick. Yeah. If, he, if he tricks, yeah. <laughs> yeah well, we're here. Name. We're going to discuss the 2014 hit instant classic film Nightcrawler, starring, starring Jake Gyllenhaal. And the reason why we're doing this is because Kino Corner, uh, by the time this comes out, will have released a video about that film. Uh, that video is not out yet as of this recording, so we haven't seen it. So to ask a stupid question, Kino, what about this movie made you want to make a video, and what do you really focus on in that video? Oh, what I wanted to make a video, or why I wanted to make a video, is because my friend uh, got a police scanner, and uh, I want to put the police scanner in my car and drive around. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, no, but what I really wanted to make the video about, and I guess what is I guess what I, ended, what I ended up doing with the video and the reason why I might be a little sleepy here is I was editing that until like 3 in the morning last uh, last night. Um, but it should be out probably... We're recording this on a Saturday, so it should be out probably on a Monday or Tuesday. Um, I wanted to just talk about uh, the what stringers are. So stringer is the, the real word for nightcrawler. Like nightcrawler, I guess, they see as sort of like an epithet. It's like... You know the difference between the hard R and the A. You know, <laughs> wow! For, for Whoa. Like Jake Gyllenhaal's Whoa. character. And that's one way it's to like describe it, I guess. It's like it's like if you're like, oh, you're a nightcrawler. They're like, yeah, you don't use that word. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I'm a stringer. You, you know what wow. I mean? It's like the um, the Urban Dictionary version. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's definitely not it. Well, because nightcrawler just doesn't have the any kind of positive connotations to it, which is why they use it. Uh, it sounds community. fucking badass. I would be <laughs> yeah, proud to be a nightcrawler. So. Well, it didn't yeah. get very far and already hung up on definitions. Hey, hey. Yeah, Kino, I'm I'm actually shocked right now that you're bringing up this, like, oh, I want to approach it from the, the career point of view. I thought this was a very clear, literally me, Sigma grind set movie. <laughs> I thought you were going to be oh, saying, no, like, no, no. Lou Bloom is no, literally me. Well, that's what, well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying yeah. that, like, in the new workplace, basically, where it's, like, it's all, like, gig economy and it's all, like, job security isn't really existent. It's, like, you have, to, like, the, the kind of person that succeeds is the person who puts cash above any kind of morality. The person who just can, like, yeah, just not sleep and just doesn't care about ethics. But then I also get into the video, get into the uh, um, problems with, the media and how media is, is uh, brought to us, but also how we're part of the problem for it being like total retards with being like, oh, news, you know, there's this <laughs> news story that's probably fake, but let me just eat it up, you know? Yeah, I like that the movie is presenting us with a reflection of our society that deranged, psychopathic people will thrive in the news media business and they should all <laughs> flock straight to it. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, well, <laughs> They, they I, I gotta say, to <laughs> Go I, ahead, I gotta Florian. say, it, it was a, a pretty good movie, you know. But like, <laughs> Jesus Christ, the social commentary is so fucking stupid. Like, I, I was like, yeah, hey, hell yeah, this this movie, this guy's really getting it, you know. 
Wait a fucking moment. Lorraine was moment. watching the movie and being like, this guy is doing nothing wrong. He's just really <laughs> cool. Yeah, you know, I, might, cool. Oh, I might have to argue for that unironically him. soon. Well, I, I just... with him got... assaulting a security guard, stealing his watch, and then like, stealing the wire, and you're like, yeah, mm -hmm. this guy's really getting it. It's called like, the well, Sigma I'm... Grind Set. No, I'm saying it, it was a pretty good movie, okay? Until, <laughs> like, in the end, it just... It, it just becomes... Like way too too much up its own ass with with the social commentary. Okay, it's just like uh, well, I want I want to dive into actually, this. So this is tell me, uh, for us? Well, Florian, what social commentary do you think does not ring true? Because I also have a problem with some of it, but I think <laughs> mostly the film is accurate. Well, I don't I really care whether or not it's true or not. It's just that it's like it it was it was getting really close to telling a compelling story, but in the end, it's like oh, I'm, I'm actually Hitler though. I'm I'm actually like ready to to kill literally everyone, like even if they, <laughs> like even if they were standing by me most of the time, you know, just just brutally murdered. He had them. a he had a reason to. Oh, uh, Pete didn't have a not reason. Get, oh, he he admits reason in the film that he's Ahmed knocked off. He uh, Lou Bloom admits he's misanthropic, Florian. He says it's not that he doesn't understand people; he just doesn't like them. He, he does understand people; he just fucking hates them. Right? Like, yeah. yeah. I, I didn't mention that. Like, I'm just saying that he. Well, you're comparing him to Hitler because he like choreographed a few crime scenes. That's not so bad. I mean, <laughs> yeah. like, if if you look at this guy, he is his business model is completely unsustainable. And the point the movie's <laughs> making. Wait, what do you mean it's unsustainable? He has three. Can I just get to the end? Sentence. It, the the movie ends morning. with him winning. He has three new people at the end of the movie. <laughs> Are you fucking serious right now? Okay, with this? guys, I just. Guys, I just, just because you compared him to Hitler, I went to that <laughs> GPT trolley. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, there is a runaway trolley barreling down the railroad tracks. Hitler or Lou Bloom? <laughs> and chat GPT says, I will save Lou Bloom and kill Hitler. Whoa. Both individuals have committed heinous acts. I am more inclined to save Lou <laughs> because his crimes were primarily focused on personal gain and manipulation for his own benefit. <laughs> Hitler, on the other hand, orchestrated the mass genocide of millions of innocent people <laughs> and initiated a world war that caused immense suffering. And okay, I'm gonna have to see a source on that. Also, also, <laughs> Lou Bloom got some really good footage out of it too. So, yeah, yeah and he knows be, how to uh, frame a shot. Uh -huh. Lou Bloom is an artist, and the movie is about Lou refining his art. Okay. Yeah. Like, it it yeah. is primarily about him learning the ins and outs of this business, how he can best like position himself, how he can best get the shot that is going to make money. And even though it's in like his psychopathic way, he does care about getting the best shot, which Kino, as a filmmaker, you have to like, you have to value say that. say that in the video that it's it's the uh, <laughs> evolution of an artist is yes. kind of what the movie yes. is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for uh, the social yeah, commentary, uh, Florian, I I think that the news media in general is just Lou Bloom personified. Like they're always trying to reframe reality into an appealing story that will get clicks or will get a lot of eyes on it. So when you watch the news, you're not even really watching the news. You're watching their manipulated version of events yeah. to yeah. to make a story. This is the thing that people will go for right now. It doesn't matter whether it's true now. It doesn't even matter if it's true later on. It is part of the current piece that they're pushing. Like, 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 like let's look at the that home invasion, right? So he gets there, he gets the footage of the two guys and their license plate. Then he runs into the house. He films like the whole grisly aftermath. I want to. I want to point something that the director and the uh, cinematographer and the cinematographer for this for this movie is Robert Ellswit. If mm -hmm. you guys are familiar beautiful, with beautiful him. film, he also was a cinematographer for like There Will Be Blood, um, mm -hmm. The Master, all these like amazing films. But anyways. Um, when they're in, when he's inside the house and he's filming the dead bodies, the camera is only focused on his viewfinder to sort of get the audience to only see that. And this happens a lot in the movie to see the world only through what Lou is actually presenting to us. Mm -hmm. But um, after, so he gets, so he only sells the stuff that he sees like inside the house, right? Uh, but then later, later about that house shooting, the one, the one guy comes in and he says, "Hey." this just broke it was a coke deal they found tons of cocaine in the house it was a drug deal gone bad and renee russo says that's not gonna sell 
put that on the put that on the lunchtime news morning news we run with this story it's like so they know the truth they intentionally obfuscate the truth and lie in different ways you know it's like when you see how the media lies right Mm -hmm. like uh sometimes it's outright lies sometimes they know the full truth but they only give they don't give you the full context to something or they only give you a partial truth which allows people to go down different paths that maybe aren't true another another thing they might do is they'll have like a headline because they know people aren't going to read past the headline or maybe the first paragraph and then they'll have the actual truth of the thing several paragraphs down and you see that in nightcrawler where it's like oh they're going to put the truth out there so that you know if it comes out later oh you didn't tell the truth about this they'll be like oh no it was on the 12 o'clock news yeah just wait seven hours (laughs) yeah exactly so, Florian, are you fuming with rage at the suggestion that the news media might be full of corrupt <laughs> liars? Other I mean, than I, when they talk about Biden, then they're only truthful. <laughs> yeah, but you like that. No, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't really have, like, a big interest in whether or not the, the news is portrayed this way. I, I just feel like the story went, like, way off the rails with, with pushing this narrative. And, like... It doesn't even make sense. Like, this guy is, is clearly, like, a very unique person who is uniquely bad, and he's manipulating everyone around him to be the worst version of themselves. So it's not a great representation of what's actually happening, because these people would have would have gone on with their life, like, telling more or less the truth, you know, if it, if it wasn't for him giving, this, giving them this incredible opportunity. Oh, but they wanted him. Yeah, I was going to say, they uh, they it, say yes to all the things he's giving them, and then I, they get good ratings out of it, so yeah, they're, they're encouraged I, to do more. I have a line from uh, Nina, the character played by Rene Russo, and she says, I think Lou is inspiring all of us to reach a little higher. Mm-hmm. And, like, <laughs> you know, and the thing is, is that Nina was quick to, um, she was very quick to take his obviously kind of unethically sourced video mm-hmm. at the beginning because like the the you know he changes both rick and nina because uh both of them are desperate right nina yeah rick is literally family. homeless he's willing to work for yeah. 30 dollars a night i know dude i would never do that 30 dollars a night for all that work no how much are you done. paying your friend to take you out night crawling 2014 money like i i don't understand right, how 30 dollars was even really anything well. then well because he was homeless that, anyway like, so it's just all it's not like paying rent or anything yeah he's i like would want living, at least like 50 he's, living, <laughs> he, he's living in his like friend's garage um, yeah mm-hmm. and and i i will say this about la so um i went out there for an editing gig and i was like oh, i'm gonna stay up uh, i'm gonna stay a little longer and so i applied for all these other editing gigs and i got offers the people would call me up this is actual post-production houses and they'd be like hey we uh, saw your editing reel and we saw your work and blah 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 we like your editing we know that you know what you're doing um we want you to work for us and i'd be and i'd say Static, okay that sounds yeah. great and then they i go so what's the pay and they go oh yeah this is an unpaid internship <laughs> <laughs> that was like so many offers that i got mm-hmm. uh on, in studios and production houses it was just and I just, I just knew that what they do is they just kind of churn through these unpaid interns because it's like mm-hmm. people trying to make it in LA and they're, and, but it, I, I'm like, I'm not going to work for free. I'm not going to mm-hmm. work for free. And it's like so many people in LA are like that. Come on, People need experience. <laughs> so many times people say like exposure is what you're getting out of it or experience, but like you are doing work and you have to live your life while you're doing that work. I got to be you able to You can't live on exposure. <laughs> got to like, yeah. Go pay for gas to get to the place you know yeah, why, like, why oh. would why would you as someone who has a fairly well-paying job not also work for free at the same time i didn't I, have a fairly well-paying job then oh i thought you were talking about now all right no 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 no, no he like, said <laughs> god damn it florian listen i <laughs> listen can, miss out, I can miss out on one word jesus cry about it, was, it. I, I was very poor back then <laughs> <laughs> i was like <laughs> I had to leave LA because I, I was I like ran out of money. I mean, I was like living off of nothing, and uh, Jesus. every other every other job that every job offer I was getting was unpaid. And they're like, "Oh yeah, you have to know people if you want to get like a paid job." I'm like, "Oh my god, okay, no fun." <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just coming back to Florida. I'm working a regular job. <laughs> <laughs>
Just, just invested it all of your, your parents' money in, into that student film you made, and now there's nothing left. Okay, I want to talk about something with, with the social commentary, and I want to know if in the last nine years since this movie came out, if we've had a cultural paradigm shift. Because while most of what Rene Russo had to say rang true, there was one part in particular that I thought, this is not, this is not the 2023 I'm living in. Uh, so basically, the idea is if it bleeds, it leads. You know, people love to see bloody stuff on the news more than they want to hear about politics and that kind of shit. They say like 17 uh, times more airtime is dedicated to violent crime than anything else. Uh, but then she's going on I'm about how... News. Yeah, local news. And, and how uh, it's, it's more focused on urban crime going into suburban areas. They really want white victims with minorities committing the crimes. And I feel like today, and maybe I don't watch the local news, but just the, the cultural shift seems to be the exact opposite, where if a black person commits a crime, you will not see it in the news. It's almost like they only want to see white people hurting the minorities now. Does anybody else feel that way? Yeah, uh, that's, yeah, that's not I what I see on my local news, so. <laughs> Well, I don't. I don't watch my local news. I don't yeah, know. Who, who would the, watch local news? That that would be su ridiculous. Supposedly the supposedly the L.A. local news is particularly like grisly and uh, leans in on that kind of stuff. I don't really comment on that in my video because I don't watch local news and I don't watch L.A. local news, so mm -hmm. I wouldn't. Well, I do only get my news from Twitter and Reddit, so I might be living in a bubble myself, but I really feel like uh, when it's a black person, they really don't want to put that out there gonna, anymore. Well, they're gonna post on Reddit if, if someone... It doesn't make any sense. Well, because this is a 2014 movie, and after Trump, suddenly racism is the top of everybody's to-do list, and we all have to make sure Whitey looks bad and everybody else is good. Yeah, like, if there's, like, a, a black person that commits a crime, they'll... the or they'll hide the, the race uh, for quite some yeah. time. And they'll like lighten or... up their skin and shit in the photos. Yeah. <laughs> they literally they do fucking do that. Wow. They do. They, yeah, they definitely the used to do the opposite, right? So I guess that's Yeah, this movie was, uh, something. you know, uh, from yeah, a better time, I'll say. Yeah, there was a huge cultural shift in 2016 uh, surrounding that because then, I you know, and, and it was, it was all, it, felt to me like very astroturfed too but people are sheep and they just sort of went along with it, mm. you know and i uh, mean i mean i gotta say it's, it's like probably just less news i guess if like you know if, if it's just minorities like i mean i guess that's just not newsworthy enough like i could see that and really at the end of the day like random violent crimes in your city shouldn't even be reported at all right like is this actually news or is it just something that's entertaining to hear about i mean the honest truth is violent crime has gone down across the country over the past like 50 60 yeah, years and so the the ability for anyone to years. like capitalize on this stuff i mean since the 80s basically like since since the early 90s i think violent crime in the in the u.s hit a peak in the in like 91 or 92. Right. Um, can't be right. It must have gone down like all the time. Uh, violent crime was pretty high in the 80s, actually. Um, was it? Florian, yeah. what was violent crime like in the 1940s over there? <laughs> yeah, I think it was pretty <laughs> high. <then. It> <laughs> well, not 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 in Germany. That was in Poland, right? So you guys. No, it was definitely in Germany. Like it wasn't <laughs> <laughs> I never. No, but you were doing it. You were do. You guys were doing it in Poland. No, they, you guys. They still, to, <laughs> they still had to to snatch up the victims in in Germany. You know, like it was oh, happening. Yeah. I know, mm -hmm. but the real violence, you know, took place like not in your backyard, right? You don't want that happening in your suburban neighborhoods. Well, you probably don't want it happening at all. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Anyway, that was the the main social commentary I wanted to evaluate. Is there anything else, Florian, that you're just angry about? I mean, I'm just amused that you guys think that, that this is going to work out because this guy is, is putting like his life on the line every single night to get these shots. And then what's he going to do now? Like he he thinks he's going to end up owning the station. Is he just going to make like his employees go crazy like that? But he'd still have to do it personally for that to work out. So I will like, say this. If Lou Bloom lived in D.C., we would know whose coke that was in the White House. 
I think I already know <laughs> whose Coke that was. Nope. <laughs> yeah, I think everyone already knows. <laughs> but you know that Lou Bloom would be able to get into the White House and at least frame somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Is it is it Kamala? Who's, who's Coke is it? Uh, I think it might be Hunter Biden's. The guy who well, hosts... Hunter's not in the fucking White House. Yes, he is. <laughs> yeah, he is. Wait, he is? Yes, yeah. he's living there now. Wow. You gotta ca- what news are you watching? The white people do everything wrong news? For fuck's sake. <laughs> well, if you're watching the white people do every, everything wrong news, you'd think that they would include Hunter Biden. Uh, no, th- their whole thing people. is defending the Bidens as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, true. catch up, you know. <laughs> uh, should we, can we evaluate Lou Bloom's character on a deeper level? Because E. Rich implied that he might have done something wrong, and I think we can argue against that. Oh, wait, I, wanna, <laughs> I, w- I just want to respond to something, though first that Florian said like he's putting his life on the line you know these actual stringers these night crawlers who go around these cities at night you know filming this um they they do put their lives on the line for, for their work when uh, uh right before they started shooting uh, Jake Gyllenhaal Dan Gilroy and Robert Ellswood went with one of the night crawlers for a night to kind of get a feel of uh, um get a feel of like what the work was like and uh, this one, this one stringer actually worked as their technical consultant to make sure that things were actually fairly accurate. Uh, and what he told them was to wear bulletproof vests because it's not uncommon for him to get shot at. But, when he's uh, filming. Yeah, that, that might have been a good idea for this movie. <laughs> yeah, Riz Ahmed should have taken notes. Yeah, yeah exactly. Jesus. Well, thirty dollars a night, he can't afford. <laughs> hey, he I negotiated believe- himself down from a hundred to seventy-five. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, I could ask for more money, right? And he's yeah. like, yeah, okay. the negotiation's over. But that's what God, kills that's- him. He gets so greedy, and he's like, no, I want half the money, blah, blah, blah. Like, that's well, why he <laughs> gets killed. Dude, he, he should get greedy. Like That's why on, he was killed! Had, he was just negotiating, and then the guy pulls out the biggest fucking crime that he's ever going to commit. And it's like, oh, 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 that shouldn't have gone into negotiations, huh? You, you're going to... It costs an entire blood bass, and I'm going to be there for $75 uh, a night. No, because he took away Jake no. Gyllenhaal's negotiating power, and, you know, you got to know your worth, and he's not worth that much. So you get shot to death so I can get a $50,000 fucking no. shot. No, what what I how I see that scene, how I portray it in my video, is that it's like this uh, Faustian deal that he makes with him, where really it's he becomes Lou in that scene because... He, uh, you know, Lou takes away Rene Russo's um, negotiating power by basically holding her um, health care privileges and, and salary over her head um, so that he can get an exclu- exclusivity with that local news network and also um, also have her like also have sex with her. Um, Which, thank and, God, they did not include that awkward as sex scene. Jesus God, Christ. Was so incredible. I also, <laughs> I also defend in my video not including the sex scene. Yeah. And I think it would have been extra awkward. And I think the main reason. So the director said that he wanted to leave that up to the viewer's imagination. Mm-hmm. Uh, and but I think the real reason is that Rene Russo is the director's wife. Oh really? Uh, I did not know that. Dan Gilroy. That Dan Gilroy is not. And Dan Gilroy is not Adam Twenty Two. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I would let Jake Gyllenhaal sleep with whoever I'm dating, no matter what. I wouldn't even feel like a cuck. I would just feel honored. So it is what it is. YouTube. <laughs> they sit down for yeah, their date, the and and Lou says to her, uh, "I wrote that. Uh, I like the dark makeup on your eyes. I also like the way you smell." And it, it kind of reminded me of like American Psycho a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, his character definitely is definitely is like a sociopath, um, you know, uh, but he's he's an interesting kind of one, too, because half of what he says are like taken are, are, are like lines taken from self-help books. Yeah. Every yeah. single thing he says you could find on a business or like self-starter website that's like you have to do these things in order to make yourself look good. Like you're constantly talking about the things you're doing in order to improve yourself. You're constantly telling people like this is what I am bringing to this this uh, exchange. And he sees every relationship as a trade. Like you were giving me this. Yeah, there's no humanity in his relationships. Right. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's 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 everything is transactional for him. And so that's like when it comes down to his moral compass, 
he doesn't think like oh shit like he he does think should i do this or should i not do this but he doesn't think of it as like this is morally good to do this he thinks uh if i do it this way will the paycheck be smaller or larger mm -hmm. so like he has he has yeah. no problem going up to like someone who is sitting uh in on the cart as the ambulance people are like wheeling them away and like getting right in their face. Like yeah, he has yeah. absolutely <laughs> no care for how those people feel. Like he is just getting the shot. And in some ways, yeah. like that's an admirable thing is to like not care about any of that shit and get the thing you're going for. Yeah, and it's, dude, it's so funny when he's just like, the person's on the, the gurney and he's just there with the camera in their face. <laughs> just staring down at them with this like blank stare. Mm -hmm. And, and like, in addition to his sociopathy and his uh, psych psychopathy, uh, I assume he's also partially autistic because when he's first starting off, he doesn't know which calls to go to. So he's like getting up in the face of somebody who's getting like tested for a DUI, like stuff that would wow. not make the news. And he just doesn't understand <laughs> what, like what he's doing is insane. <laughs> well, and like, I, like I, one of my favorite things is like he goes up and like runs right into these situations. <laughs> yeah, he like, like parks really just right on, on the guy. <laughs> it's up on people being like, "Hey, get the fuck out of here! What are you doing here?" And then he doesn't reply to them. He just kind of like goes slowly backwards, <laughs> like just goes back to where other people are, and like he just doesn't say anything. That like that's the, the they should rename an autistic it. cameraman. Yeah, they <laughs> they. uh one one of the things that they were working with in this video was calling his character a coyote, mm -hmm. and Jake Gyllenhaal supposedly lost like twenty eight pounds for the role. He just um, ate kale salads and shit. He took some yeah, uh, Ozempic. Insane. Yeah, no, he just ate like a couple kale salads a day, and he would <laughs> bike to set every day, mm -hmm. so that he was like. I mean, it wasn't a very long shoot. It was something like a 28 day shoot. It was like four weeks or something. That's insane. Yeah, yeah that is and insane. Because of how many locations they have, like they're all over the place in this movie. What, That'd so he was something. still losing weight when they're already shooting? How does that make sense? Wouldn't he want to stay the you, same? You're not gonna, you're not gonna lose a whole lot of weight even doing that over a 28 day period. And the movie takes place over the course of like a year. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, but yeah, no, they had to do like, uh, location moves every single day like shooting like two three locations every single day uh like company moves which are huge to do you know and it's a pain in the ass doing them at night as well which they said that because they shot it at night they didn't encounter la traffic and then that was like how they actually managed to pull off the film mm. but yeah no uh jake was literally starving himself while shooting the movie uh, because he, well, for one, he wanted to look like this, like super, almost like super hungry person, but he was like in this like starvation mindset, which made him also act a bit crazier. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that you scene know, when he I, breaks the mirror was like not, he was not even supposed to be filming. <laughs> he was just freaking out because no, he's so hungry. That, that scene was not scripted. Whoa. Wow. Yeah, so, Lou screams at the mirror and it breaks. So, um, yeah, so that the mirror breaks actually, in such a perfect way, too. It, it's insane. Yeah. Yeah. That scene was not scripted. It was just supposed to be Lou looking at the mirror and then Jake in the sea just starts screaming into it and breaks the mirror. And he caused this huge gash on his hand. He had to get like 40 stitches. Oh Jesus. God. Fuck. This this movie definitely put Jake Gyllenhaal on my radar for the first time since what? Fucking Donnie Darko in the 90s or whatever. Yeah. What, you're not a fan of gay cowboys. <laughs> Look, I, I saw that movie way after it it had its had its time. Oh, okay, so I saw hey. the first five minutes and turned it off. I've actually not seen the full film. <laughs> and you, you didn't know what it was. It was like, boring as fuck. Minute, they? <laughs> my dad's friend, my dad's friend at the time, you know, like this this boomer guy, uh, doctor. He he and his wife went to go see Brokeback Mountain because he thought it was going to be a western film because he really likes the Clint Eastwood and John Wayne. <laughs> so he really liked it. No, he walked out of it. <laughs> I didn't know it was that kind of Western. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, 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 I will. together, you know? I, that's how, I, 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 works. Yeah, that's how you think gay sex works? Yeah. They rub their dicks together? <laughs> Is that not how it works? <laughs> I don't not think so. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Um, so I, I want to bring up something that, that Jake says kind of early on in the movie that I, that I feel like uh, um, 
feel like becomes sort of a theme for the movie. And it is another one of these platitudes that, that I think is said in like AA. I, I tried looking into like where this this uh, this idea came from. I saw that AA says this a lot. Um, supposedly there's there's a book on this that's like one of those like self help books. But he says, "Do you know what fear stands for? False evidence is <laughs> real." Um, yeah, is that taken and, from the the bitchy teacher character in Donnie Darko? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's 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 supposedly something that like they tell you if you're an AA. Uh, Mm. Um, but there's also a book about this idea of fear that I looked up the book and I was like, there's no way I'm, I'm paying money for this book. <laughs> <laughs> like, like shit. Um, and I just but, like the idea that you'd look up the word fear and, and that's what it comes out as, you know? That's, yeah, that's what, in the what dictionary if, for you. What if every word's definition had to be a fucking anagram? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so inconvenient. Because <laughs> <laughs> then, like, false is like an anagram of something else. Evidence is an anagram of something else. Um, <laughs> just go no, so fucking far. brain rot. <laughs> brain rot shit. Oh, God. But, but, um, but I think that it... Uh, I think that it's it works for the movie because what he's literally giving the audiences is like false evidence. It doesn't start off that way. Um, it doesn't start off that way. But by the time he gets like the car wreck and he starts changing the scene, mm-hmm. you know, and and even in the car wreck, right? He's changing it to get better lighting. But then yeah. he starts orchestrating uh, these crimes entire and, like yeah incidents yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh, guys, when, it's not an anagram. Uh, I think it's an acronym. We might have got that wrong. Oh, yeah. acronym. Yeah. Uh, my well, here's, a, already, here's a question. Uh, yeah. Did So the, the guy who is running the vans, who is also a nightcrawler... He, Bill Paxton, he has this, baby. Bill Paxton. Yeah, he, he has this terrible accident. And I, I, I just don't know. Did did our main character cause this accident in some no, direct way? No, it's entirely really random, I think. No, it's right. not. We see him underneath his van fucking with it. Yeah, he <laughs> Is that true or no? Oh, really? Yeah. Holy yeah. shit! Yeah. You didn't see that scene? Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a very short scene, but yeah, <laughs> wasn't he sabotages. He, he, he sabotages Joe's... So yeah, it was Joe's totally plan. intentional. He was pissed. The dude got to the plane wreck before he did, so he went and sabotaged his van. He got to the plane wreck before he did, but it even goes back to when Joe... Bill Paxton's character sees uh, Lou as like this, as this serious competition, right? Mm-hmm. And he wants to acquire him because he's like, I don't, you know. So Joe tried to go about it the uh, the American way. It's like this guy's serious competition. Let me acquire him, make him my employee, and then I won't have the competition. The right? Social media mogul style, fucking Facebook and buying he's Instagram. Trying, yeah, trying to like, be a monopoly. I mean, he Basically tried to get Instagram hired by him at the start, WhatsApp. but I guess I guess that chance has passed. So he's That's right. not interested anymore. Well, just and then, swallow him up. Yeah, and then Lou was just, at that point, Lou was like, no, I want to be a media mogul. That was his mindset. And he knew that if he was an employee for somebody, that wasn't going to happen. He wanted to be the boss, you know. Could That's you right. imagine yes. him being an employee to someone? That would be insane. No, he yeah. has to own no, his own business. well in that. <laughs> yeah, there's no way he's going to be an employee. No. And so, um, so, you Look, know, I, I swear he would have made a, Lou tells he, he would have made off. a really good employee. Okay. He, he just became too insane when he saw too many opportunities pass him by. So he decided he had to be the big bad boss. Okay. It could have all worked out if that guy just hired him from the start. No, that's bullshit. You don't hire no, these. His own it, man. Fuck you. I don't, <laughs> think, it w- I don't think it would have worked out because I, I think it's inevitable that they would come to some sort of conflict and that Lou would screw him over at some point. Like, even if he was his employee, Lou would probably do the same thing be- to become, like, the head of his company. But, um, you know, in the Bill Paxton, Joe is, like, is telling him how he has these two vans, how he can cover two different things at once, how he can be at any place, like, before anybody gets there. And I don't think Lou quite believes him when they're talking, but when uh, they get to the uh, the, mm-hmm. the airplane wreck before... He's already walking away. He's already got he's the He's already shots. walking yeah. away. He realizes this guy is going to put me out of business if I don't do something fast. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it, you know, and at that point, he didn't have the capital rate to raise to get, uh, like, two vans and to get, you know, a whole team. Mm-hmm. So he did things, the, the not 
the, the not so ethical way. The not, you know, maybe it's maybe it's just as American, right? But it's almost the personification of capitalism. Just do whatever you have to do to make the most money. It doesn't matter how many people get hurt. I, yeah, I love yeah. the scene where they're walking away. We're not. They're they're going to shoot the footage of of Bill Paxton in in that wreck. And Rick says, like, he's one of us, man. Like, leave him. We, we shouldn't be doing this. And he's just like, no, he's he's it, not anymore. He's, <laughs> yeah, and well, he's he actually now. Calls, yeah, he's he a money maker for us now. So, so he actually like did all of that to him, and then also filmed him. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. pretty rough, but this isn't then, capitalism, then, you know. This is a thing that cavemen would have also done. Like, you see your neighbor has a better farm, you kill him and you take it. That's that's caveman shit, okay? It's still capitalism, it's just doing whatever you can to get well, the wealth for yourself. I mean, they didn't really have money order. that much back then, right? Well, in, in that case, the farm and the crops would be the money. It's cut through a capitalism. It's so like, are you saying yeah. that everything is capitalism? Everything at all? If you are motivated by capital and you do bad things to people, I think that's capitalism. Wow. I, so, so it's just, per, just, just completely bad in this definition, huh? Capitalism. Yeah, I, I'm kind of with Florian on this. This is more like caveman shit. Uh, sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah like, Lou Bloom's a caveman. You got me. No, but like this, yeah, this exists in no, 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 because this exists in all kinds of businesses where like you steal shit from other companies and you then release it as your own thing and yeah, you make you, meta you fuck them over. <laughs> yeah, and then you I get mean, fucked over yourself because nobody wants to use it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, no, but he did uh. I think that he cut the brakes. I, I, I was reading up online, like, what did Lou do to his van? And there's all these theories, like, he put in driving controls, he did this, he did that. But I don't think it matters so much what he did to the van, other than he did something to the van that led to mm -hmm. Bill Paxton uh, crashing into the pole. And um, I like how he's just like, Bill Paxton just like looks up and he just sees this dark blue bloom <laughs> staring emotionless mm -hmm. with the camera in his face and it's like it's like he's seeing like the specter of death mm -hmm. like, there you know um it's everything it's is a, just the next shock. opportunity it's just the next thing that will get him where he wants to go like that's yeah. all that people and then, are and then, and then the but on the other hand that same scene the, the film mirrors that same scene with rick with uh riz mm -hmm. ahmed where he does the same thing. He, yeah. he, you know, after Riz Ahmed kind of makes that, that deal with him that Lou's like, this is not a good deal. So he, but not only does Riz Ahmed get shot, he gets like one of the best shots of the, <laughs> of the night. He's like, he's going to make sure to milk Rick for as much as he can. Oh, yeah. he's dead. C come over and film him. <laughs> and, you know, and then, and then Rick just gets shot up and then he just goes over Rick's body films and then films his dying his dying body just like he did it's like this this human connection isn't there and he sees everybody as a possible sort of uh possible source of content yeah so which of course that, that, that would never in happen there... in capitalism just to be clear that's only caveman <laughs> stuff did, did yeah. lou know that the so guys in there were still alive reason right huh did Lou know the guys in there were still alive and he knowingly sent Rick into a dangerous situation yeah, or yeah. He, he, yeah. Oh, okay. he, knew, sure. like, he knew cause the guy was moving in there mm -hmm. and that's why, and that's why Lou, um, kind of stood back behind the car and God, yeah, that, he was definitely that hiding scene, himself. Yeah. That scene is so crazy. Like he, the guy goes, comes out of the, tr out of the car, he shoots one camera guy, then he shoots a cop and he looks at the other camera guy that is also determined at filming him despite the incredible threat to his life and he just doesn't bother killing Lou but he totally could have Lou just took almost as much risk as the other guy yeah it's, Lou did get lucky crazy. at the end well <laughs> how, keep lining like, so, up to die from the sky so I was if you read the director's commentary it's Dan Gilroy and his two brothers so his other brother produced it his so the the director's his twin brother, brother yeah, his other brother um, is another film director. He made Michael Clayton. Tony and, Gilroy, baby. Also made Tony Andor. Gil <laughs> yeah, Tony Gilroy. Yeah. And then um, his other brother, John Gilroy, is an editor and was an editor mm -hmm. on Nightcrawler. It was basically a family movie. Um, and uh, they were talking about that particular little scene and 
how they were describing it, and it makes sense if you if you watch the movie through the eyes of like that um, that Lou Bloom is this like coyote, you know. If you if you see him as that, like he's he's kind of half starved. He's like feeding on the detritus and the corpses, you know, that he can find in the desert, right? And that it's kind of like one coyote seeing another coyote at the end. It's like mm-hmm. it's like he could have been that guy. You know, and that guy could have been him. Like they yeah. both sort of operate under the same. Uh, There's a kind of nihilism same. of like not seeing people as people, seeing people as like things to get out of them. But and yeah, I'm sure and drug sees, dealers are the same way. And he sees him as like a like as another coyote, another one of him. You know, and uh, that's why it's kind of like there's this almost an affirmation of you know at the end of it's like, oh yeah, we're the same. So I'm like you're not on my radar, you know? And that's why he go and you know, and the cops show up like right then and he goes out to shoot the cops. Of course he gets pretty, you know, wow. pretty, pretty killed. <laughs> that, that's um, crazy. <laughs> you really think that's how, how it went down? Jesus. Well, he's just saying what the filmmakers had to say about it. I mean, I, I, agree, but... I agree with, I agree with that. Like, you know, I think it's a, it's kind of a poetic moment um, in the film. That I he mean, looks it's, at it's probably it. overly po- poetic. He wouldn't have been able to see that in just a glimpse. It's like, oh yeah, what? that camera guy, that's one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> that glowing light in the dark. Hey, yeah. At some point, that's you have to accept guy. the artistry over what would happen in real life. <laughs> mm-hmm. Which, I, speaking I, I, of I, this like movie... Really, I feel like there's too much of that. Like, a lot of this is oh. just... Just like commentary and, and well, hey, there, there's one thing in this happened. movie that I really appreciated that felt real to me. They avoided a trope that is in every movie and TV show ever made, and that's when Lou, there's a news story he wants to see, and he has to flip through like five or six channels until he finally finds it. Whereas yeah. if this was a lazier, shittier movie, he would have just, just turned on the it TV. On, it's right there. Yeah, yeah, it's playing immediately. So I appreciated that. For I was watching. Also when I was watching, thing. I was just like, it's just flipping through channels now. What am I watching? <laughs> but then it also, comes on. Also, um, something that they, that they did in this movie that I don't think is appreciated enough is that they used actual local news anchors from LA mm, as yeah. the news anchors. Hey, Breaking movie. Bad did that, and people made fun of them because the news anchor had his stupid fucking name. And they're like, oh, what, what was Vince <laughs> thinking? And then the lady's like, no, I'm real. <laughs> <laughs> well, what did but, the average um, want to say? Well, no, let, let Kino finish his thought. Oh, because uh, the director was talking in the commentary about how, like, if you get actors to play as news anchors, that you can kind of, t- you can usually tell that mm-hmm. it's actors who are trying to play as news anchors. There's something right. missing because you have to have this, like, corniness to how you. Yeah. Uh, how you how say you things, how you, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, I, there's a whole training in, like, how to actually speak as a news anchor that, like, an actor is going to just imitate it, but they're not going to actually be that. And and so for the for the scene where, um, you know, they're showing that whole uh, home invasion scene, actually, th- they had a scripted part, but I think what actually made it into, into the movie, at least bits of it made it into the movie, uh, the director was just, like, riff on this as, mm-hmm. like, you, as would you would on it. Yeah. As mm-hmm. you would, yeah. Yeah. And, and I love Rene Russo, yeah. like feeding them words, like things to push, things to like make the yeah. newscast more tying into the story they're, they're doing. But to make it yeah. scarier. And that ties back into no, Kino's exactly. point that we forgot about the the fear acronym, uh, fake evidence appearing real. That is Rene Russo's whole job is to make the people at home as fearful at, for their lives as possible. Yeah, you know, it reminds me of a certain uh, certain well, they thing. They should that be afraid world, if he's out there. A certain thing that happened worldwide for a couple of years, not too long ago. And they're trying to make everybody as scared as possible of it? Yeah, they're, they're trying to make everybody as scared as possible. Yeah, there's only a few million people dying, come on. Well, we're talking so about Hunter about. Biden's drug use, of course, and not anything yeah, yeah, else. Yeah, we're talking about the cocaine in the way. We now. should all be You're afraid. Right. It reminds, it right. reminds me of Biden the... Is harmless, they should not be afraid. <laughs> it, it reminds me of the immigrant caravan that's coming from Mexico every couple of years. <laughs> yeah. To, uh, <laughs> It just happens to show up around the election, guys. Yeah, it's, how it's come kind of they haven't amazing. gotten in yet? Yeah, right. <laughs> what are they doing down there? Well, maybe not. They gotta get a big battering <laughs> ram. <laughs> we should start putting their children in cages. All right, Florian. Florian, what I wanted to ask you is, you have a problem with this movie and the like, the message or the like, 
I don't know, the, the way it emphasizes certain things. What is your version of this movie that is that is improved? I mean, I guess it's a tough one. I, I feel like this might almost be better if it was like a series, because th- this has a lot of I would of love that. To- yeah, I know, right? <laughs> like, we get this, this great... This great concept, but in the end, it just goes completely overboard, and then it ends because because I guess it just had to be a movie that 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 talks about these things. But then, like, it, it couldn't be pretentious and go on for any longer. So that's all we get. Yeah, give me a sequel that... series ten years later, and Lou Bloom's like the fucking executive of his own news empire, and he's just cutting corners and making the least ethical choices at every Lou turn. Lou Bloom should be like the head of CNN or something. Like, he has to like, like fight David Zaslav. Like the new Logan Roy. Like this is his origin story. <laughs> yeah, no. The director said that um, he thinks that. And this was in the commentary but in 2014, but he thinks that by like 2023, 2024, Lou would be like a media mogul. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> like, and those are the well, types of people who are become yeah, executives. Absolutely. You have to be a fucking in psychopath. Order, in well, order I to mean, do there's only jobs. a small chance that he'll succeed because like most likely he will die the next day. Like every day he, he <laughs> completely risks it all and plays full on Russian roulette. No, no but Florian, like the more people he gets underneath him, the more he can just kind of like go into the shadows and just no, be like no, telling people to because, go here there. Because that's not going to be how he becomes that big. He has to pull this he's he's he has to put big. everything on the line otherwise he would just be no. another executive who doesn't get he, anything no, he gets, any leg up he, over anyone else no he gets other people to be as crazy as he is for the most part he sends them out to do those things and then he's able to craft things the way he wants them and the way he wants to show things when they give him the footage like that's that, that's, that's, that's even what how happens. it ends he has two vans yeah. he's in one of the vans but you can you can kind of think ahead to the future that at some point, he's going to have more vans, and like they're going to be able to cover the entire city, and basically he might have be, a monopoly on yeah, it. And he doesn't. He might be in their the ear, end. telling them, telling them what to do, where to go, and he just needs to find the people who are willing to do the things that he tells them to do. Yeah, and he but, says yeah. at the end, he says, "I would never ask you to do anything that." <laughs> and, and he's serious. He anything. <laughs> yeah. Well, there Which you go. Like, he he's still doing anything, like anything. Like any absurd risk he can possibly take, he's probably gonna go up to the people who are his competitors and and literally murder them himself. So he no probably he he's ever no, gonna he, be in less no, danger. He doesn't have to. But the thing is, I don't think that he will have to do that anymore. Mm-hmm. Like after the end of this film, because how the film makes it seem like is that it's the start of him having an effective monopoly. Well, that's, yeah, that's he's actually, cornered the market like, here. It, that's not gonna work because. Like the the shit that he does, only he can do. Nobody's gonna stage an entire bloodbath like this where there's like ten people dying just because he called them, just because he, he called the nece- cops. He, he doesn't. Th- necessarily, no one else is gonna do that for him. He, do- he doesn't even necessarily have to do that anymore. I mean, that's mm-hmm. like that's, no, no, that was his big break. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. the main he, he thing to, that he does different than everyone else. Do, he needs to do he, that still. He needed to but do something him. to like get. To get to that spot to where he could have the money to then mm-hmm. ha- like have this and now and now it's like the com- the competition's competition's effectively gone. Um, he doesn't have to do that anymore. I mean, he can ask. Yeah, I know. I know. Buy this stuff for him. I, for him, I think is, because of no, like there's smaller things people can do that will position them and position like the stories in ways that he can use, and that's how he starts them down the road where he eventually is like you just have them do smaller and smaller things until suddenly they're like going along with crazy shit you know i don't i don't buy it i think this guy cannot stop i don't think that it will be possible for him to turn off this bullshit he is a full-on adrenaline chunky and he is gonna risk his life every chance that he gets and you can't convince me otherwise okay he's an adrenaline not guys we heard it here first florian cannot be convinced i'm ready to move on uh do we have any final thoughts on the film nightcrawler (laughs) <laughs> um, I, I saw this when it came out in 2014. Sorry, sorry. I just want to say my piece real quick. Uh, I was astounded by it. I think Dan Gilroy does some great fucking work in this movie. I think that actually the music in the movie is pretty awesome. Uh, James Newton Howard, yeah, James Howard, I think, did, did the score. And when I first heard it, I was like, this is so weird. It's like portraying it as if he's like a hero or like 
he's like doing amazing yeah, things. Some noble but things that's, happening. That's the point is that it's the music in Lou Bloom's head <laughs> yes. as he's doing it's that's what it the, is categorizing that's why I say my video. his it's categorizing his rise video, yeah. and like <laughs> the not, amazing not, things he's doing it's, in it's order not to get where he is. It's necessarily heroic, but I, I think it, it kind of sounds like chariots of fire at some times where it just feels like a huge triumph. Not necessarily a morally especially, good one. But, especially yeah. like look at the scene where he like moves the body uh yeah. in the car crash. <laughs> it's like inspirational music playing. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. Like, yeah. insp it's this inspirational music <laughs> as the camera is like tracking in on Lou and it's like yeah. this like heroic shot and you're hearing this like this soaring music and you're like well, wait i just saw him do something really bad yeah and, uh, <laughs> well, it, well if he was a hero, in your then, mind. this would be a somber scene but but the fact that he is just like off his meds and, and really enjoying this shit makes sense that he would not he off would his meds this. i don't think he was ever on meds yeah he doesn't no, need meds <laughs> yeah he's on hey, the, I have, the grind i've set. got he's good news <laughs> my phone just gave me a push notification for the new anti-reviews video only Whoa, three or four hours life. late. Talk about a psychopath <laughs> who likes to make content. <laughs> uh, so I want to I want to end it on this is that uh, and I do bring this. I, I pretty much said a lot of what I say in my video. Um, mm -hmm. So don't. Well, this podcast this will get my... way more views than your yeah, video, don't, don't so don't worry. Don't watch the Kino um, video. It's just, I, you know, cannot get it all here. <laughs> but uh, um, when Dan Gilroy first met up with Jake Gyllenhaal in Atlanta to pitch him on the script J jake had read the script had liked the script he was being quartered for something else and he was currently shooting prisoners which is one of my favorite villanova yeah, yeah great movie um and, watching paul uh, dano get the shit beat out of him for <laughs> two hours straight classic <laughs> classic, <laughs> but, classic um, guy. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so, so so they met up and jake wanted to because like on paper uh you know on paper it might read as like this kind of downfall of this guy right and Jake, but Jake had read it a little bit differently and he wanted to get a sense from the director, like what kind of movie this was. So, so Jake asked Dan Gilroy, he said, uh, how do you see this movie? And Dan immediately said, I see it as a success story. Mm -hmm. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Lou, is, Lou becomes successful. It's about a man like finding success in this world. And then Jake said, that's just, that's exactly how I see it. And it was mm -hmm. like that, that little that answer that actually solidified Jake to want to become part of this project and when you know mm -hmm. when you know that, that this film is a success story but it's like tracking this kind of moral downfall of Blue Bloom with this sort of um, a business like uh, uh, with him ascending and in, in, in business ascending in the world you know that they're, they're both fairly parallel to each other uh, it, it makes a very uh, interesting not just an, an interesting character in loop bloom but it also just a very interesting story because uh um there was a movie actually that came out in 1950 one of my uh, um one of my patrons pointed pointed uh to me and it's, it's on youtube you can watch the full movie called shakedown which is kind of inspired by ouija i don't know if you guys know who ouija was um, who nope. was a photographer in the mid 20th century. So he worked from like the 30s to the 60s. Uh, he was one of the behind the scenes photographers on Dr. Strangelove. Uh, he mm -hmm. got to start as a nighttime street photographer in New York. And then he found out that he could make more money by essentially ambulance chasing and going to crime scenes and taking photos of crime scenes. If you look up Ouija crime photos, you'll see some really graphic stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and he would sell these to tabloids. Um, and there was actually a book by Ouija called The Naked City, which got, uh, which inspired the classic movie, The Naked City. Um, but there was a movie in 1950 called Shakedown. If you watch it, it's almost, it's very, very similar to Nightcrawler. It's about a sociopathic photographer who goes about staging crime scenes, or, you know, he gets tips, he gets tips on what's happening and, uh, he won't call the cops. Instead, he'll let the crime happen so that he can get fo good photographs of him. Nice. But you know, nice. since it was 1950 and like there were the like the Hayes Code was still kind of in effect, uh, you know, it couldn't end. It, like that was situated as a downfall of the character. You know, like he had to. You know, that kind of character has to die at the end, right? Mm -hmm. Like that was Correct. that was the movies back then. Journal, like good journalism had to win he had to yeah. die at the end like the other the other journalists he was working with were all very like 
we don't like what you're doing. Like you're selling, like you're selling good photographs. Like we're selling a lot of newspapers, but we don't want to work with you because we think you're unethical. And he turns to, you know, he turns to actual crime mm, at the mm. end. And that becomes his, his eventual downfall. Um, but it's like Nightcrawler takes this and goes, but how would this be in the 21st century? <laughs> <laughs> you know when yep. uh, when journalism journalistic integrity uh, you know maybe doesn't quite exist as much uh, yeah <laughs> you know and so it's like let's take essentially that story but make it about a guy where the more he sinks the more he rises yeah uh, like back then you can only portray something as long as it also condemned that thing and it yeah, was like exactly. if you if you go about this you're going to have a bad end but in this movie <laughs> another, it's like yeah. you can do all those things and succeed wildly <laughs> another movie that's like that you know from that time period is uh, ace in the hole with kirk douglas which is also great mm -hmm. um you know it, there were movies about these bad journalists and everything back back then who would do whatever they could to milk stories for whatever they were worth but they had to get their comeuppance back then. Nightcrawler, you know, he's now the head of C CNN or Fox or whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Florian, how many stars are you giving this film on Letterboxd? Eh, probably four, yeah. It's, it's okay. pretty good, you right. know. I, mean, I was I'm, very I... afraid you were going to say something much lower. Yeah. It's only I mean, one star below the Mario movie. Rage yeah, Florian Himsel. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, he used to like the Mario movie, you know. He, he just downgraded because of peer pressure. Wait, three and a half stars is. Uh, I give the same score to Mario as Into the Spider Verse or whatever fucking Sp <laughs> Spider Cartoon I, I, Two. I could have sworn you gave it five stars at the start. Never! Wait, no way! <laughs> If only yeah, I'd take really screenshots. Absolutely. And if anybody can recover me saying fucking five stars to Mario, <laughs> let me know. Did not happen. Florian, oh, I really I really need to see the series of videos from you where you take apart a movie and say what the better version of it would have been for you. You take out all of the like inherent drama or inherent like uh well, thematic well, it resonance be, it, it or would be pretty simple you, you like you just go just a tiny bit less far because this is it, it is just ridiculous there's no way that these characters make any sense like this like really he's gonna sacrifice the guy who who came into this into this line of work with him like he could have just fired him no he, he had to get him killed really like, come I, I think that I think that you can also look at that, Florian, as that if Riz Ahmed's character Rick uh, actually had a moral compass, which I think his he did have a moral compass, but it degraded ever since working with Lou. Uh, he would have just walked, and he could have just walked. Like if you know if he really was like concerned about right or wrong, he could have just gotten out. He could have just walked away from it. Yeah, yeah, he was taken over by greed in. when he thought he could yeah. get half of the reward money. And he was so yeah. greedy, he went along with it, and that's what got him killed. Well, yeah, I mean, exactly. that, that deal wouldn't have been possible because, like, I guess technically Lou would have made, like, all the money that he's ever going to make in that night. So he would have had to share it all with, with him. So I guess that's why he had to die. He was just a tiny bit too greedy. But That's right. But what a shame. He, he Life really lesson learned. Yeah. Yeah. Could you imagine, like, you just got... <laughs> riddled with four bullets w would your brain even be able to process or care that jake gyllenhaal betrayed you like he gives like a three minute conversation with jake like oh you did this on purpose <laughs> like at that point i'm just trying to die in peace like walt shut the fuck up and let me die walter that kind of thing <laughs> yeah. uh, but he's really like jake gyllenhaal how could you do this to me i'm bleeding out on the floor ah. well I, I've and been then mad. like he does that too after because um I, we, we brought up uh, this one line that, that Lou says not not long before this, which is, what if my problem was not that I don't understand people, but that I don't like them? And then he says, what if I want to just hurt you right now? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and it's and you, it's like at that moment that Lou was like already trying to figure out how to get Rick killed. And if my employer said, like, what if I just want to hurt you right now? I'd have been like, all right, peace out. Uh, yeah, I'd I'm, be gone. It's <laughs> over. Even... I mean, the implication would have been that if, if he left, then he would definitely get hurt. Like, he, he told him, I'm going to hurt you if you don't do what I say. So I don't know if, if there was still a way that he could have survived at that point. 
You just take off running. If you're homeless, he's not going to find you. <laughs> <laughs> the, the perfect getaway. Well. well, we're hitting about an hour, so let's do some plugs and get the fuck out of here. E. Rich, you always got a lot going on. What video's coming oh, out on yeah. your channel soon? Oh, yeah. My channel is full of just me trashing Florian and his entire channel. Uh, Please, e Rich, for the love of God, can you make the anti-anti-reviews channel and just review Florian's videos? It would take you yeah. 10 minutes a fucking week. Come on. Like, like it's not exactly like Florian puts that much effort into his <laughs> No, he has an editor and everything. All you have to do is just react to them as they play live Wait. and then upload the footage. <laughs> Florian, you have an editor? I thought you just, like, yeah. watched the videos while just, like, spouting off because, like, you, you'll even like put up the videos where, you, like the onion video, where you don't even realize you're reacting. Well, I, I, I have some easy videos, but like the other videos are, are pretty edited, you know. Florian is is literally paying top dollar for these videos that get like 130 views. <laughs> well, He's insane. If I could get every single person who watches Florian's channel to watch my channel, and then maybe a couple more, <laughs> I could maybe outperform Florian's channel. Which I mean. At that point, well, all you would have to do is yeah, plug it at the end of these podcasts, see, Rich. You could easily yeah. get a hundred of these retards to watch that horrible shit. <laughs> it, it's it's very possible. Just do it. I'm dead serious. I will promote the fuck out of it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's I, your I plug. The believe. anti anti reviews channel. Go check it out. I can't believe mm -hmm. that you would say I'm insane. Like. You realize that me making videos like costs me way more than than the the little money I spend on editing them. <laughs> Jesus, like, mm -hmm. how is that not insane? Yeah, what the You're fuck? Literally <laughs> spending more than than it, it works. It counts. I mean, I, I I could make like a hundred, two hundred per hour. I don't know how much I'm gonna get when I start releasing my my new games, but you know, it's it's gonna be like a lot of money and. I'm really, I, I don't know, I, I just like making videos occasionally, okay? I don't know. Well, you don't like it making is. videos, you like paying somebody else to make it for you. Like, it, if you liked making videos, you would do it for free yourself. Mm -hmm. I mean... The editing is it, the least fun part, so... Yeah, no, I mean, we, I like the other parts. To, yeah, you like the fun like parts. Like make, uh, I guess yeah. I have time to make Ballfrog too. True. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> it's coming well, soon, anyways. folks. Check out my, my video reacting to the drinker and, and his misogyny about the Indiana Jones movie. What, what a what a great video I've made. I yeah. will literally be watching that in about three minutes. I can't wait. Hell yeah. Best way to... It's, it's like my Saturday morning cartoon. Like, what is Florian bitching about this week? <laughs> <laughs> yep. And, uh, yeah, by the time this comes out, I'll have my Nightcrawler video up. So, you know. Hell yeah. Out. Well, folks, we did it again. One of the most Kino films of this century. Uh, Kino, we were talking before. You said uh, 2014 was basically the last year that you were excited about films. What has yeah. happened? What has happened? Uh, I don't, you know, I don't really know. Like a lot of the, even a lot of the prestige movies, like the Oscar movies, don't really excite me a whole lot. Like there's always movies each year that I, that I like. 2014 was a particularly good year. I think that also uh, um, Grand Budapest Hotel came out that time. So did Birdman. So did um, Inside Lewin Davis. Uh, Whiplash? Was, yeah, Whiplash. It was just like, that was like a year where everything seemed very, like all the new movies seemed just very exciting. And I was I was going to the cinema all the time. And, and since then, it hasn't really been the case. Um, you know, there's movies I get excited for, sure, but... Just like Shang-Chi? Kind of... <laughs> yeah, like Shang-Chi. <laughs> you know, but it, it th that was like a particularly fairly great year. 2014 was great. 2007 was also really great. Um, and uh, 2012 haven't... is a really good movie. Shut <laughs> up. Shut up. <laughs> Can we all agree that Jake not even being nominated for the Oscar for this movie is a huge crime and the Oscar should be burned at the stake? Yeah, he definitely should have gotten... He should have uh, won the Oscar! He, he didn't even get nominated! He, he didn't even get mm -hmm. nominated, yeah. I, Insane! I guess it was too close to home for them. Did uh, this Did this get any kind of nominations? Any screenplay or anything? I don't... Probably I don't not. Think. I don't think Nightcrawler got any kind of nominations. Oh, it was Man. nominated for one Oscar. 
let, let me see what that let me see what that was for. Best mixing or some stupid shit. <laughs> it's probably best be camera nice. work. Oh, that'd be nice. <laughs> yeah. Um. See. Uh. No. Best writing original screenplay. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah. that's fair. Yeah. That, yeah. Uh, so it got one nomination. It didn't win. Uh, Jake should have definitely got nominated. Well, he didn't get the Kids Choice Award for this one. That's yes. <laughs> yeah, he, he wasn't able to get slimed. What? <laughs> Bye, everybody. Green slime all over. <laughs> Bye. Bye.